happy to welcome you at our school library and we really appreciate you um, spending your time here. Um, as an introduction, I would like to ask you about yourself a little bit and maybe you can tell us about your work. My name is Pavel, Pavel Sedlak, which is a Czech name. I'm Czech. I've been living and working in Prague ever since I was born in 1977. And these days I'm uh, with CIEM, which is the Center for Art and Technology based in Prague, which is a non-profit organization. And my professional background is in theory of art, so I studied continental philosophy originally, and then started to write about visual arts and culture. And this was around 2001, when I discovered the field of new media, as it wasn't very much popular or uh, how promoted in Prague or in the context of the other country. And I met several interesting people, including my colleague, Paulus Matana, who established the organization I worked for. And that was the moment when I started to slowly escape the field of visual art and culture in general, like contemporary art, and started to focus on new media. And since that time, I've become organizing events, uh, the parade of the festival, I do some writing about the media, arts, and I've been responsible for the organization that was when you say new media, what do you exactly mean by that? By new media, normally we mean uh, new technologies as they can get employed in the arts practice. So we don't usually talk so much about new media as in a mass media sense, but more about emerging technologies like biotechnologies, nanosciences. And we are interested in actually connecting communities of people. On one side, it's computer scientists or scientists in their labs and on the other side, uh, artists and aesthetic people from different domains, both performing arts and visual arts. So were you founding signed as well, or you joined it after it wasn't written? I did join when it was written as a proposal on a paper, and I did help develop it from paper to reality. Uh, did you have any personal mission that signed helps you to fulfill? What was your ambition? Why would you like Well, since 2001 or two, when we started meeting, like three of us working sort of for free for three years, we were thinking, why don't we have a media lab in Prague? Because uh, the guy I mentioned, Paul Smetana, had been quite familiar with similar labs uh, as they emerged in Europe in the second half of the 90s, mainly. And when he came back to Prague from uh, France, where he studied and was a professor at the Academy of uh, Fine Arts in Aix-en-Provence, he didn't find any similar institution, so he decided to establish one, and I was one of the first people helping him to do it. So we had a first proposal on paper, thinking how do we connect these communities of artists and scientists and people who work creatively with technologies. And so we were searching for funding. That's what we actually have to do on a daily basis. But with the first international projects, it's like a snowball. Once you have a first initiative, then another one comes, and uh, these days we have been quite successful at building up a network which spreads all over Europe, but also beyond. We work with people from the United States. My colleague is these days in California, by the way. I see. And again, Media Lab. How does that thing look like? Media Lab is uh, usually a space with few computers and few interesting guys inside. So normally, it sounds uh, very strange, but once you enter these media labs, you just find a lot of computers, a lot of wires, and people and their minds trying to be wired. I see. Uh, what is, in your view, the convergence of art and science? And why is this convergence important? Well, for me, uh, this what we call art science or art technology and science emerge. Like, Convergences is something that describes uh, what what is taking place in the society because all those formerly known individual disciplines have been dissolving. So these days, most of the guys that are working with us have been studying, for instance, computer science and arts at the same time. Or one they started in the computer science and then start then receive up. Uh, other degrees in in the arts. So I think the competences are these days so much meeting each other and coming together that uh, we are no longer interested in uh, you know, just arts for art's sake or science for science's sake. Everything comes together and that's 
the field of operation that we enjoy uh, supporting. Uh, can you explain us what does mixed reality mean? It's a technical term. Uh, it could be uh, a mixture of real and virtual uh, characters or elements. So there are different terms like augmented reality, which is usually connected to visual displays that can add up uh, uh, virtual factors on top of uh, real imagery. But mixed reality experimentation is as well uh, very much explored in performing arts. When we, and that's a part of our expertise in CM when we try to connect real actors and virtual actors, for instance, talking to each other, interacting with each other. And what is the difference between multimedia and intermedia? Well, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Especially in Prague, actually, there are many people using intermedia term because it's more like, I think, less technically biased. And uh, these people are talking about intermediality, which means when different medias come together and interact with each other. But multimedia is a more technical term, at least in my point of view, which which takes different media in order to convey a meaning in multimedia form. But intermedia is more about uh, reflecting on this meaning of media. So I think in, in my personal very uh, like naive perspective, it's just like two technical terms describing some kind of practice. Intermedia is less technical to me and means more like reflecting on meeting of different media. Multimedia is more like integrative approach using different media all together to come to one meaning. Okay, that's interesting. Um, Stephen Johnson states that interface design is the art of the 21st century. What do you think about that? Interesting. Interface design. For sure interface culture uh, is something very important. Interface design is important as well because it helps us design our interaction with objects and uh, computers it's themselves. These days, I, I don't know if uh, it's just about interfacing. Maybe uh, we also have social media coming into this interface design very heavily. So, for instance, when we are planning a new festival called Enter for upcoming April, we will be showcasing a lot of projects which are focused on the idea of smart objects that brings intelligence into objects that suddenly are open to interaction. So that's where we are talking about interface design and interface cultures. And for instance, in Linz, the interface cultures gave name to a study program. So I don't know if it's the, the only term how to name 21st century, but it's both design and interface is very important. And I think design perspective is becoming very essential for uh, solving of real real life problems. So design studies and design practice is becoming more and more important. Since you mentioned the festival coming up, can you please tell us a little more about it? The festival is, I would say, the largest and the pioneering kind of initiative in the Czech Republic because it started already in 2000. It was originally called Anto Multimediale. So it goes back to your question about multimedia. Back at that time, of course, technologies have been intersecting with the arts and culture world differently than they do these days. So these days we even call it uh, just enter and it means an introductory uh, opportunities for people uh, from different disciplines coming together. So we are no longer just focused on multimedia techniques in arts, but we are more and more interested in uh, the interdisciplinary dialogues. So people, especially this year, the, the topic of the festival is data police. So we are very much in looking at uh, how data are being produced on every minute and every step we make and how uh, these data are being captured, transformed, and used or misused among us, and how these processes are creating communities. So the data police meaning is also pretty much into this police, which I think is becoming more and more important. It's no longer just data, but these new communities which we are now creating through uh, innovative use of different data. So when and where is the festival going to take place? When and where? Yeah. It's uh, April 14th to 17th, and the main venue will be the National Technical Library, where we are opening uh, the exhibition in 2-4 gallery on the 14th. But there will be other locations like Cross Club for uh, different audiovisual performances, or yes, uh, Sunday 16th, and many other conferences taking place within this recording. 
Okay, so there are going to be audio, visual, visual performances, conferences, what else? Debates, workshops, and the exhibition. Will the visitors be able to participate in the debate somehow? Or? Well, some of the formats will be more open, some others will be like keynote lectures you hardly intervene into, but you can, of course, but there will be open formats like workshops and debates and everything. Mm -hmm.